I don't think I'm going to spend as much time as I did last week. Because I'm going to be speaking and Jose is not going to be translating. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So our topic today is... Thank you. Uh, our subtopic today is... Okay, uh, the topic for today's, uh, is today's message, today's sermon is strengthening. Okay, present continuous, something that is continuing. Okay, if we're strong, we get stronger. If we are weak, we strengthen ourselves. So the topic is strengthening, earthly source. And what I want to take, the point I want to take today is the power of making right decisions. Amen? The power of making right decisions. First of all, what is power? What do we understand by the word power? If I tell you you have power, what does that mean? You have authority. Okay, what else? Strength. What else? Silence. What? Ability. Wonderful. Let's close our eyes as we pray before we start praying. In Jesus' name, the last thing of glory, we thank you for gathering us together and we commit the word that we want to preach unto your hands. We want to receive. First of all, we ask my Father, our Lord, that we open our hearts to receive your word, not just be receivers or be the messenger, but be doers of the word. Let us live according to the standard of the word that you give us today. And Father, Lord, let us, my Father, O oh Lord, receive and be able to give unto others. Let us be able to bear fruit from what you have today. Let your words, my Father, O oh Lord, minister unto our lives and remind us of your purpose as we move on stronger and stronger in faith. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay, so I said, power is, you said, strengthening, you said, authority, you said the ability, the rest of you said silence, right? Strengthening is, rather power is, what else? Okay, so most of you believe that power. Nope. I didn't hear, the strength Strength, strength to control or to do something or to make decisions. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, good. Okay. Praise the Lord. Okay, let me start by defining power. Okay, power is the authority or ability, the identity, the legality to do something without question. What's the difference between... There's this controversial question. What's the difference between the army and the terrorist? What's the difference between a thief and the police? One has the moral authority. Though they have the weapons, though they have the, the resources, one has the legal right, the other doesn't. So power is the ability. What is power in physics? Power is equal to? What? Thank you very much. The force exerted over a, 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 a certain distance. F is B. Wonderful. Some people still remember their physics. Wonderful. Praise the Lord. Let's, let's, let's just move on. So power is the ability given to you to make decisions. Power is the right that God has given you to make decisions for your life. Amen? Do you know that most of the time, the decisions we make, any time in our life, determines what we turn out to be? Do you know that God gave you will, power to make decisions by yourself. Let me give you an, an instance now. Um, let's say, uh, who, has, who has a wallet here? You can just give me the wallet. Quickly give me the wallet. Let's say this is my wallet, for example, okay? And of course, in every wallet, there is some kind of card, the most precious card, the ATM card. So let's say this is the ATM card of Stefan. And I one day just look at the ATM card and I say, okay, Charles, take this card. I'm trusting you with my card. I give you the pink code and everything because he's looking at me funny. <laughs> and I said, um, Charles, I trust you with this card and um, do whatever you want to do. Uh, purchase whatever you want to purchase. Question, am I making myself vulnerable? 
Yes or no? Yes, I am. No, I trust Charles, but it doesn't mean that I cannot do something, right? Amen. Praise the Lord. What I'm trying to say is this. God gave man the willpower to choose. And when God gave man the willpower, God surrendered the only thing that made us decide. Amen. Permit me to say this word. In that case, God made himself vulnerable. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? God gave us willpower to choose. Amen? God gave us willpower, power to make decisions. They're not always right decisions. Amen? The legal right that God has given you to make decisions for your life. Amen? We're going to divide this topic, the power to make the right decisions, into three points today. I'll be as quick as possible. I want to really expand on different points. First point. How we go about today, how we go about using this power. First point, obeying God. Obedience to God. Now, some people define obedience as total submission. In Bible school students, you remember very well I asked you this question. In fact, this question is still inside the papers today. What is the difference between obedience and submission? That question is still there, and so many people still feel it today, so don't worry. But obedience is total submission. Obedience is you accepting and following without complaining, without murmuring, without anything else. Let me use this simple example. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 4. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 4. Now, the Lord said unto Abram, that time he was still called Abram or not Abraham, get out from the country, get out from thy kindred, and from your father's house unto a land I will show you. And I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you, and I will make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. And I will bless those that bless you, I will curse those that curse thee, and you and all your families of the, of, the, of the earth shall be blessed. So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him. And Abraham was 75 years old when he departed out of a city called Haran. Amen. We know this story very well, right? Famous story that so many books and movies have come out of. How old was Abraham, by the way? 75. Now that's the point. That's where I want to touch today. 75 years old. Abraham was 75 years old, and God told him to pack your bag. Okay, let me, let me, let me, let me, let, me, let us, let us, let us, let us bring it down to our district. Elizabeth, 25 years from now, you're a CMD, one of the states, you know. Maybe they invite you for, there's this course they normally give to CMDs in Nigeria. It's, uh, it's in Joss Kuru uh, for top doctors. You, uh, top doctors, top notches. So everybody knows your name. You used to make everything and everything. And then God speaks to you when you finish the course. After the course, by the way, the vice president or the president comes to give you a special NIPSS, this thing. It's very, ex very, very established. It's like you're next to the queen, something like that. It's nice, it's good, and it's a lot of money. And then God speaks to you. Elizabeth. <laughs> you're already laughing. I've not said it yet. Elizabeth, rise up with your family. Your... How many children? Your, how, how many now? Two? Four? Twenty? <laughs> Rise up with your children and go to Madagascar. I want you to start an evangelical product for me. What would you do, Elizabeth? Would you start to say, I cast that demon from <laughs> Praise the Lord. So Abraham was 75 years old. Let me explain something. Most people don't live up to 75. Okay? Abraham was 75 years old. In this world, 75 years means you have already retired from your job. You have grandkids. So obeying God comes with faith. 
comes with sacrifice. Obedience is not obedience. It doesn't cost you anything. Obedience is the same as sacrifice. Amen. Obedience is the same as sacrifice. I define here what is obedience as the act of submission. When the will of God is united with your will. Amen. When you obey God, it's not because it's easy. It's because you are synced together with God. Let's say God says, walk this path. Go this way. I say, no, God, this place is broader. It's nicer. But God can see far ahead. God can see your end. You can't see it. Remember I said this statement two Wednesdays ago. I said this statement about um, what my father says, that a young man standing cannot see farther than an old man sitting down. It's the same thing with Christians and God, that God can see the end of every one of us. He knows the way. He knows the end. He knows which way is right and which way is wrong. He has seen the end, but right now all we can see is the obstacle. Did God mention the city Abraham was going to? Let's read it again. Did God mention the city Abraham was going to? He says, stand up and go, and I will show you where you're going. No direction. Amen. No direction. Let's open to Hebrews chapter 11 verse 8. Let's, let's read the, the conclusion of that story. Hebrews 11 verse 8. He says, By faith, Abraham, when he was called out to go to a place where he should receive an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out not knowing where he was going. God said, Let's, let me use Elizabeth, because I'm going to use Elizabeth today, today very well. Yeah? God said, Elizabeth, go to Madagascar. No, Madagascar is not the cartoon you guys see. That's not Madagascar. Madagascar is desert like our hearts, okay? Go to Madagascar and go and preach the gospel. For me. And the funny thing about this story, the interesting, the thing we, we tend to forget is that Abraham did not see the rewards of what he went to do. Go and preach the gospel. And then they say, okay, yes, Elizabeth stands up. Our whole family uh, puts her money inside trust fund, carry, you know how they used to do it in cartoons, stick and, and nylon bag. And goes to Madagascar, set up camp, and then they spend 10 years in Madagascar preaching. And then only one person has actually come to their service after 10 years. Obedience is having faith. What does the Bible define faith as? Now, faith is the, the evidence. Obedience is not knowing the answer to the outcome. Obedience is going the way because God says go that way. Amen. Obedience is a decision. You decide to go with God. Nobody forces you. It is without condition. And for you to obey God, you have to be in harmony with God. Who here um, have heard the praise and worship when sometimes they sing let's say, combined service or maybe afternoon service or any other service, and then maybe somebody is tired among the praise and worship members, maybe they're not eating or they're fasting, and then they make a mistake in the song, or they, they go three keys down, or they go one key up, or they go sideways with their key, and then you cringe your ear a little bit. Or who has heard maybe sometimes, maybe when um, the praise and worship is singing, you know, and they are dancing and we're hitting a wonderful song. And maybe we don't know what happened. Then the electricity shorts out. And then all we're hearing is <laughs> no instruments, nothing is playing. And then everybody in church is like, okay, what is happening? 
How many? But who here likes a cappella? Who can spend, who can actually open, you know, this, let me just explain something. You know that when you're browsing Facebook, there are the skippable videos. Then when you hit a cappella, you open it, play it. You want to listen to how it finishes. How every single different person harmonizes together. They're in synchronization together. When we are sync with God, we can obey God's word. God can decide for us. Because when we are sick with God, God can order our steps. He can think and act, and we can trust in him. Amen. Problems usually arise when we make the wrong decision. Problems always arise when we make the wrong decision. Point number two, be original. Be original. Amen. Be original. Uh, this is, I don't know, for, for some time now, the, the point two of every sermon for the past five months now have been making a lot of sense. And now let's have examples for points. Praise the Lord. Being original. Being yourself. There is only one Vivia that is a doctor in the year 2008. 18, sitting down at this place. There is no other day. There is only one Matilda with the hairstyle 125 degrees to the northeast, smiling at my jokes. No, no they're not really funny because nobody else is laughing at them. About to graduate in one year to come. There is no other Matilda like that. So why do you need to act like somebody else? Why do you need to conform yourself to somebody else? Look at your fingers. You know I love using this example. Look at your fingers. Why are your fingers not equal? This thumb, if you had no thumb, there's some things you could not do. You had no, what's this finger called? There's some things you could if you had no, what's this thing called? Because you cannot do. And so on and so forth. I don't want to stick the other fingers one by one. But what am I trying to say? Everyone is different. Everybody is created. The intention that everybody was created different was on purpose, was deliberate. Have you noticed that even identical twins are different. There is no other GD like this GD. And it was intended so. It was intended so. There, was, there, 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 there is nobody else that is going to fill that role he's intended for. Let's open the book of Samuel. First Samuel 17. First Samuel 17. Verse 38. This is a well-known story about David and Saul. First Samuel, chapter 17, verse 38. We'll read from verse 38, we'll go to 39 and verse 40. See, and Saul armed David with his armor, and he put a helmet of brass upon his head, and he armed him with a cloth of mail. Verse 39. And David gritted the sword upon his armor, and he had said to go, for he had proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, because I have not proved them. And David put them off. Verse 40, and he took his staff in his hand and chose five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in the shepherd's bag, which he had, even in a um, script. And his sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. Maybe the intention that God makes you different is to show his glory in you, your way. Maybe the intention that God makes you different is to show an example somehow. The Bible said Gideon was the smallest person in the smallest tribe in Israel. And the smallest person in the smallest tribe took 300 men and defeated an army. Abraham never fought with God. Abraham brought and welcomed God into Israel. Jacob, however, fought with God.
every single person is created differently for their different purpose. When you try to live another person's life, when you try to copy another person's life, you're like a Xerox paper. You have the original, then you go and photocopy it once. It's black or maybe it's white, but it's not as clear, it's not as good, it's not as authentic as the original. And the more you photocopy it, the less you become yourself, the more you become similar. Do you know as a Christian you're meant to stand out? Do you know that? You're not meant to be grouped together. You are meant to stand out. If you feel yourself adjusting to the morals of the, of the world, being, uh, accepting the things that are common, you would just, that's how your life would just go on and go on. And you might not even have a name mentioned. You might not even have anything done. You might not even fulfill the purpose God has for your life. If you make the decision to be original, if you make the decision to follow God's precious plan for you, then and only then will you stand out. The right decision is never the easiest decision. The right decision never, ever is easy and will always cost you. And decisions come every day in every aspect of your life. Decision to sacrifice time to pray. The decision on the next step. Decision to choose what God has had for you, even though the other, the, other, the other option is more lucrative. The decision to stand firm, even though others are falling by the way. The decision to restrengthen yourself when you see yourself weak. The decision to do what others are not doing. Amen. Amen. When I first came to this country, I was told two things. Number one, um, if I don't study my books, I won't pass. Number two, I don't need to learn Russian. So the two things I learned, I, I was told before I came to this country. When I came to this country, I spent two years studying my books. I literally did not go out. Literally did not go out. So I got a lot of nicknames for those two years because of my one, it's called the um, one direction, church, church school, church school, up and down. And when I understood that there is more that God wants me to do than the school itself, when I started making the hard decisions, when I started making the right decisions, but the hard decisions, to do things that normally I won't do, to enter ministries that I never saw myself in, to undergo certain aspects in my life that I never saw happening, there, became, there began the change. You know, as Christians today, we might be what we call the common Christian. We might pray, go to bed, we're good morally, we're good eth ethically, we, we do not, we do not, um, we don't cause trouble, we don't, we're comfortable. We, the, 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 one, some of the um, more radical Christians use this term, they are the more than Christian. We don't stand out because we don't neither dress like Christians, nor do we act like Christians. We're just there. But the dangerous thing about these kind of Christians is that there are no help for anybody. There are, no, there, are, there are no use for anybody. Why would you call yourself a Christian if the very important, the very use, the very need of you being a Christian is not being fulfilled? 
If you are called to be a Christian, if you are called to be original, then be original. Amen. 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 Let's open to the book of Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14 to 16. Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 4, from this. Is it 4 or 5? 4, yes. 4, verse 14 to 16. Seeing then that we have a high priest that is passing to the heaven, Jesus, Son of God, let us hold our feet. Hold fast our profession, that we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmity, but was in all points tempted like we are, yet we are sin. Let us therefore do what? Come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. For us to do anything to make a difference. There's an extra. There's so many things you can use your photocopy of your passport to do in this country. But there's a limit where it stops. Where you have to bring out your original passport before some other levels. There's so many things as a common Christian we can do today on this earth. But do we take the extra step of being original? There's a limit. Amen. Last point for today. Do the work until you finish it. Amen. Do the work until you what? Finish it. Do the work until you finish it. Who loves cakes here? We have a lot of blessed sisters that make cake for us on birthdays, advertise for us. Beautiful cakes, wonderful cakes. You know, I've been eating some of them on the church anniversary or other things. Imagine, let's, let me give you an example. Imagine Benedict or, or Jennifer makes a cake, a triple layered cake. You know, she spends all night baking it, and you know, she has to put the ice into, stick them together, and then she's tired. She doesn't ice the cake. She doesn't decorate it. She just brings it like that raw, and then she says, take your cake. Would you collect it? No, the cake might be delicious, but will you collect it? Since you've paid for it. Of course there's a cake you've paid for. Oh, you think it's free? <laughs> it's cake free. Cake is not free, no. Or, 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 let's say, let's say, let's say, um, we're about to, okay, let's, do, let's, do, let's stick, let's just stick with the cake. Would you collect it? You wouldn't collect it. What would you tell her? What? Decorate the cake. Ah, that's what you tell her. I tell her, carry your cake, I'll be going. <laughs> Go and bring my cake for me. Let's say, you um, do anything, you start anything in life. Let's say you start any mission or you start any work, you start any process. Never is the starting, it's always the finishing. The parable of the workers that started working from 8 o'clock in the morning to 6 o'clock in the night. And those that started from the beginning that were asking for more pay. And the laborer said, did I not agree that whether you start yesterday or last week or two years before, that this is the pay I'm going to give you by the end of the day? It's never about how you start. No, so many of us, we pay attention to how we are falling halfway. How we are weakened when we are going the road. It's the final day. Let's say you're running a race today. You're running a race against Usain Bolt, you know, people that you know that they'll definitely beat you. And then you reach, it's, let's say it's a 400 meter race. You know how long that is. It's the whole stadium. And you reach 50 meters. And Usain Bolt's already in 150. Will you stop? 
you what? Will you stop? Oh, if you stop, who's supposed to stick around in the last position? It's not still you. If you continue, won't you still finish the race? Which one is better? Finishing the race or disqualified? Or who watched Nigeria so much yesterday? Wow, oh, wonderful. Nigeria really, really went for modeling in Russia. Wonderful team. So let's say after Croatia scored that second, second goal, Nigeria said, I don't do it again. And I walked out of the state. We're not playing again. What kind of rubbish is this? <laughs> what will happen in the match? They decided that, okay, we're not playing again. Uh -uh, why are you just come and be flogging us anyhow? Is it that you can and they just decide they, they're walking, they just walk away? They won't do that. You starting something is not the point, but finishing it is. And never did God tell you that starting something and the race, the, race, the path, the everything you're going to do is going to be easy. God never told you that becoming a Christian, becoming a child of God is going to be easy. God didn't tell you you're going to be sitting inside, uh, sitting down on the island of Bali, drinking mojitos and staring at the sun through your sunglasses and saying, God's grace is marvelous. He didn't tell you you're not going to face trials. He didn't tell you you're not going to face difficulties. You know, some of us will have formed the usual habit of when God allows something to hit us, we just thought, ah, God, why now? Why did you do this to me, God? God, I've been serving you, I've been serving you, I've been coming to church, blah, 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 this and that. One of the best examples I like to use in this church as a practical example of finishing something is that is the Bible study. I love to use that example for one reason. Every single time we start Bible school, those of you that have graduated understand this very well, but all is plenty, right? But plenty. We're like 20 something, 30 something. You know, the, the room is stuffy. You know, people are like, ha, this Bible school is going to make sense. First topic, righteousness. Pastor will take the topic, like, ah, Bible school, oh shit. Then we reach like um, church and relationship. That's like four topics after. Okay, no, six topics after. And then we're like 20 something before, then we're like seven. Let's just say seven, seven. As in, it's not still bad. It's not bad, right? It's seven people are still there, you know. This is when I talk about the love, the relationship, blah, 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 good and good, everything. And this is like July entering August. Then we now reach apologetics, the ending stage. Then two people come to church. Or maybe they even come and say, ah, Bible school day. I cannot make it to do. I'm tired. It was never about how good you start. But if you're not doing it for me, in fact, you're not doing it for anybody. You're doing it for yourself. We all do what we do not to show off to anybody. Just like the talents that the master gave unto the various servants. All these servants that he gave talents, he gave them talents because they were good servants. Which master gives a bad servant money? No, no master does that. They were all respectable, knowledgeable, wise servants. So he gave five, two, and one. You people are the people, you are the leaders. You are the people that are showing responsibility. Take the talent and go and multiply. And he traveled. He left. And he, as, as he went, the, the, the person that had ability that had the power, maybe he was not so bright, but he still was available, was around, wanted to do the work, did the work, and got five more. But the person that maybe had the biggest talent, was wonderful, was blessed in gifts and everything, and doing everything, the person was not available. God took the, 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 the ability he had and gave it to somebody else. You know, we watch um, 
sermons today on, 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 on YouTube, or we have podcasts that we watch strong, wonderful men and women of God preaching the gospel in, 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 with fervency, with, with knowledge. Like Benny Hill, that when he comes, he prays and everything, and he goes like this, receive, and you see like 2,000 people fall down. And then you also, he comes to church on the rock and you say, receive, you now basically slap somebody. Did God did not call you to be Benny Hill. God gave you an ability not to show off. But an ability. He gave you something. Don't use that something to impress. You know, most of what works in this church is not what we see. It's rather what we don't see. The people that go to their beds to pray for healing for this person. The people that do their work backstage and you never know what happened. You hear, ah, this sister is in the hospital. Next thing you hear, she has been healed. You don't know the A from the B. You hear, ah, this guy, this, 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 ah, and everything is fine. You don't know how it happened. You don't know why it happened. You just know that it's clear. When you start the race, you finish it. Do the work and you finish it. Acts chapter 20, verse 22 24. Book of Acts, chapter 20, verse 22, 24. Let me open this. Book of Acts, chapter 20, verse 22 to 24. Let me just read it for us so we can about it. It says, And now, behold, I go bound in the Spirit unto Jerusalem not knowing the things that shall befall me, save the Holy Ghost that witness in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions abide me. But none of these things move me, neither do I count my life dear to myself, so I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus Christ, testify of the gospel of God. Second Timothy chapter 4, from verse 5 to 7. Second Timothy Chapter 4, verse 5 to 7. And it says, But watch in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, and make full proof of thy ministry. For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought good fight, I have finished my course, and I have kept what? My faith. I love how the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 9, verse 27, that as you are Christian, messenger by words or messenger by life, by action, do not fall down to the standards that you preach, that you say. If you have the best talents in the world, and at the last second, don't make it. It doesn't count for anything. You know, the Bible, most of us don't admit this, and I'm going to tell you this today. Take it as you like. Whether it's manka or it's water for you, I don't really care. It's truth is truth. There's so many people in the Bible that we know of their stories. But I've seen in the Bible that their end is not right. So many people that were designed to be deliverers, to be judges, to be kings. So many people that books are written off in the Bible. But we know their end is not right. Now, most of us, we are determined to, to, to see that, yes, this person was so good 90% of his life that God would overlook the 10%. And let him enter the kingdom of God. No. We're on this narrow road. Straight is the way and narrow is the gate to heaven. But broad is the way and wide is it to hell. We're on this narrow road. We are walking with the grace of God. 
And it's only at the end, it's only the end that matters. The Bible says, first shall be last, and last shall be first. I say these things today for you to understand the power of making right decisions. I say these things today so you can understand what every decision you make in your life means. If an instrumentalist, especially a guitarist or pianist, wants to tune their guitar or organ, they take a tuning fork and they hit it on the wood. That is key A. No matter what kind of tuning fork it is, that is the first key every guitarist or instrumentalist tunes. And every instrumentalist plays in synchronizations together, together because if you play the guitar and it's not tuned, well, we have heard guitarists playing guitars that are not tuned on service. We know how it sounds. It sounds as if somebody doesn't even understand what they are doing with their life. And that is how it is. When we are in disharmony, what's the word? Out of harmony with God, we are like lost sheep. Maybe this way is right. 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 We don't really know what we're doing. We see an opportunity and we enter it because we don't ask God any longer. God. But when we are walking with God, the power to make the right decision ultimately is from God. If you take, let's say, for example, a major decision in your life today, and that decision has to do with your future, and you made the decision based solely on the pros and cons, the warning sign to tell you that the choices you're already making don't involve God. When you make your decision, any decision, no matter how small or how big it is in life, and Jesus is not taking the wheel, Jesus is at the back seat. I told you in the beginning that, yes, God made himself vulnerable to us by giving us the power to choose him or not him. So though he's all powerful and all magnificent in everything, he has given us the one thing. Choose me or don't choose me. I will still be waiting and be looking at you. And I actually can't do anything because I gave you that power in the first place. So as we understand, as we move on in life, as we make decisions, as we take steps forward, two steps, three steps, five steps, metaphorically speaking, let us understand that as we're taking these steps, we take them with God or without God. Nobody knows what's going to happen tomorrow. Nobody except God. No matter how small the decision is, and no matter how uncommon the decision is, follow God. I want to end up by saying this. Slow and steady wins the race. The key word here is being consistent. Consistency. The famous story that every single person in every single culture has been told about when we were small is the race between the tortoise and the rabbit. Different formats, same principle. Now, most of us, we know... The other version. Well, all of us, we know this version properly. The rabbit is fast. The turtle is, is slow. The rabbit is not consistent. The turtle is, is consistent. And almost in every single race, the turtle wins. But does anybody have another, another different version? No, nobody has another version. What I'm trying to make is this. It's not about how fast you can make it. It's about making it. It's not about how much talent you are given. 
It's about how you use it. Everybody, every mature Christian, everybody that has spent time in this country, you know, you have seen with your eyes, you have seen people that are blessed with talents, singing, of healing, of deliverance, of, of missionary, of prayer, of deliverance. And you've seen some of them wasted. It's not about how much you have. It's about how you use it. May God give us the wisdom to make the right decision for our life. As he has given us the willpower to choose. May we choose in accordance with him in Jesus' name. Let's rise up on our feet as we pray. Decisions, decision, decision, decision. This, I think I struck a nerve with six courses because decision time is for some of the. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, wonderful. Praise the Lord. Uh, in, in medicine, there are, there are always stages. There's always the entering medicine, and there's always the exam stages toward coursing. And there's the what's next. Then there's should I start family? Of course, there's the, should I marry? It's always a decision. Should I move to this country? Should I do this? Should I do that? Let me stop medicine for a while. Let me come back to where we all are. We're all Christians, brothers and sisters in the Lord, moving forward towards one goal. We are unified. Question I want to ask you today as you close your eyes is that are you in synchronization? Are you synced with God? Are you in harmony with Him? If God says far, do you say far? Or if God says do, do you say me? God says go left you say no I see right as the better way if God says stop you say no God I cannot go that way it looks too difficult if God says fast you say God no I cannot I need to or in some cases do we still even hear what God is saying are we in synchronization are we obeying the will of God God told Samuel to tell Saul, Saul, go and kill every single person in that city.